Hello Curious Minds, I'm Miles Maxer and you are watching the Ant Explorer on the Ant Network. Today we are exploring Highlight Canyon, which is in Gallatin National Forest. This is in southwestern Montana, pretty close to Montana State University. Today we'll be taking a look at what ants are actually present here in Highlight, and we'll also be collecting live colonies for our outreach and research needs at Montana State University. Here, this thing is wicked. Secure some brood. While our research expeditions take us far and wide in search of ants and other wildlife, we are lucky to have amazing landscapes right in our backyard. The mountains of southwestern Montana are home to many fascinating plants and animals, including ants, if you know where to look. Oh, come check this out. All right. These are fantastic. Okay. I believe these are is actually a very rare species of leptothorax. It's quite difficult to find here. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is start collecting this colony. Okay, I think we got every single worker that was in that colony. Now, these are fantastic, very small ants that actually are cavity nesters, so they don't really create their own nests. They like to live in existing cavities. This is a very exciting find and a new record, at least for me, for Gallatin County. Flip this rock and there's a beautiful Myrmica colony right here. And uh, because we don't have very many Myrmica in the lab, I've just got to collect this one. This is a gorgeous little colony that will be great for a display and for our outreach purposes. Now, these are actually known as North America's native fire ants. They are distinct from Solenopsis invicta, which is the imported fire ant. And the reason that they deserve that name of fire ant is just for their very painful stings. These colonies, especially in the Northwest, often contain multiple queens, which are only a little bit larger than the workers themselves. Here's another colony of Myrmica, but under this rock are a number of winged elates. Now, an elate ant just means that it is winged, and once the uh, queens remove their wings, they're considered deolates. These look to be primarily males, and these males are warming themselves under the rocks, preparing for their nuptial flights. One thing that's really important to remember when dealing with Myrmica is that they have a very potent sting. So trying to be hands off with this colony is sort of a must in this situation. Okay, folks, check this out. We found a Laceous Queen. We're actually filming on Labor Day and this species is known as the Labor Day Ant because they have their nuptial flights so consistently throughout North America over Labor Day weekend. We're gonna go ahead and collect this queen. It's always worth taking your time and ensuring that you don't hurt the ant when you're trying to collect it, because then nobody wins. There she is. You can even make small barriers with your fingers. This is a beautiful ant, and Laceus actually makes some of the best starter ant colonies, in my opinion. They're usually one of the ants that I am uh, very quick to recommend to beginning ant keepers. Okay, so we found one of the species we've been looking for. This is actually a Manica queen, and she's beginning to dig under a small stone. Manica are related to Myrmica and other Myrmacines but they're very large, uh, particularly for that subfamily of ant. This is likely a Manica hunteri queen. We just collected one a couple of yards away from here, and we found another one here, and these are fantastic for starting up young ant colonies. They're beautiful ants, and they work very well on displays, particularly for kids. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and collect this queen. Now this genus does have a very powerful sting, so trying to avoid 
handling these queens, if at all possible, with our hands. After collecting some queens along the forest's edge, we decide to venture further into the meadow. This is Tapanoma Cecile, the odorous house ant. Now, these smelly little ants actually extend across the entire continent of North America. But as far as I'm aware, there's actually only one species, which is Tapanoma cecile here. In different populations, some colonies are monogamous, which means that they only have one queen. Where in others, they are polygonous, meaning that they can have multiple queens in a single colony. These ants are well known for their very pungent odor. And what I'm going to do here is crush one of them, like this. Smell it, and it smells very strongly of kind of a rotting coconut, a uh, very strong coconut smell. To some people, they smell like blue cheese, but at least in this region, and to myself, they smell like coconut. So we just found another manica queen crawling through the grass here. Now, collecting ants in grasslands like this can be significantly harder than in forests or other ecosystems where you can more easily uh, reach the insects themselves. But there are some very fascinating ants that live in grassland ecosystems all across North America and really throughout the world. Nope. Nope. It's harder than it looks. All right, there we go. So this right here is an adult grasshopper. It's a reproductive. Grasshoppers don't actually have wings until they're of reproductive age or at that stage in life. Grasshoppers like these are actually major players uh, as herbivores throughout ecosystems, particularly in the grasslands of North America. They also provide a uh, significant food source for the ants that live in grasslands. All right, we'll let them free. We found a decent grouping of uh, Laceus and their cocoons, which is also another word for uh, the enclosed pupae that Formicine ants have. And these are just under a rock here in the prairie. The ants will move the cocoons deeper into the nest, depending on what their temperature needs are. We're actually going to collect a couple of these cocoons in order to boost some of the queens that we found today. The queens will accept these cocoons, hopefully, and it'll actually allow them to start their colonies faster rather than the traditional method. One thing that's absolutely critical is that you come prepared when you go anting. Right now I'd like to show you some of the tools that we take when we're going to collect live ant colonies or even just ant specimens in the field. The first and probably the most important one is a trusty aspirator. Now it can be very important uh, to make sure that you have a filter on your aspirator. This will protect you, it'll protect your lungs from inhaling uh, potentially hazardous material like fungus spores and dust when you're collecting ant colonies. Uh, always make sure that you have a tight-fitting stopper with your containers and that you have the lids or plugs ready in your pockets or, or at a moment's notice when you need to plug the top of the aspirator. Additionally, there are other tools that are very useful when it comes to collecting ants. Now here I have two different types of forceps. These are from BioQuip. Now these are actually soft tip forceps, meaning that they won't actually hurt me when I go to pinch myself and therefore they won't hurt the ants or other insects that you're using to collect. There are ones like these that are fine point and ones that are larger and these are more adept at catching things like formica or Camponotus, whereas this can be really useful if you're going in for those really small Solenopsis or Tetramorium. In addition to having those, if you're going to be collecting live colonies, a small trowel like this one can be very useful uh, to just get the entire colony from under the rock and into a collection container. Having a Tupperware or other container lined with Fluon can also be excellent to have in your pack in case you need to do that and just put an entire uh, colony piece into that container. Another thing that's important to have if you're collecting specimens is ethanol. We use 70% uh, ethanol in our lab uh, to put specimens into for later identification and even to enter our museum if they are specimens of interest. 
Unrelated to ants themselves, but also very important, are the tools that you need to keep yourself safe. Here in Montana, we have grizzly bears, black bears, mountain lions, a whole bunch of large charismatic mammals that would love to, uh, to really cause your day, uh, cause some problems in your day. So we always have bear spray and large knives with us as well. Another thing that I find invaluable is having a pocket tool just like this one, uh, ready to go at a moment's notice. If I have to you know, cut some grass away for a shot, uh, use the pliers to pull something out of the ground, or even uh, use the screwdriver head to work on our camera equipment, having this right here is absolutely invaluable. Another thing that you should always have is an empty vial on you and very easily reachable. In case you find a queen that's scurrying away into the grass quickly, you want to make sure that you're able to pull that vial out and get her before she gets away. I love wearing cargo shorts myself. This gives me the capacity to carry lots of different equipment in addition to my packs. So just try and remember to bring all of the tools that you could possibly need with you when you're out anting or collecting insects for any other purpose. Ooh, beautiful. We've got a uh, pretty respectable uh, little laceus colony here. There you can see a winged male, actually. And they have pretty good sized piles of very small developing larvae here, and even a little mill millipede right there which isn't going to harm the ants, and the ants probably aren't going to harm it either. Well, we spotted another Manica queen. This has been a fantastic day for collecting queen ants, and particularly this genus right here. These are beautiful ants. We are so excited to be raising them in the lab. We're very fortunate to have this species here in Montana. When you're collecting ants, it's important not to injure them and to really give a lot of consideration uh, to their welfare. Additionally, your welfare should be considered. This includes not aspirating things like formica, which have a large amount of formic acid that they will uh, deploy when you disturb a colony. And it also means uh, making sure that you know what ant species you're dealing with to the best of your ability. Ants like Manica and Wormica can give you very uh, serious stings. And for those of you who may be allergic or also hiking with someone allergic to insect stings, that's a precaution uh, that you need to be able to take. As evening approaches, we leave the meadow and head deeper into the forest. Right now we're taking a look at a nest of a laceous species. Now these are the Labor Day ants that we talked about earlier, but this is actually an established colony. There's a large number of workers running around under the rock and they've actually been warming their brood under this rock to speed up the cellular development within the eggs and larvae. They've already evacuated all of the cocoons that were at the surface, but there's still a very significant egg and larvae pile uh, placed right here under this rock, which indicates to us that these queens are at least producing uh, eggs at this time of year for a final brood before winter comes. Check this out. This is a massive laceous colony, and they are biting my hands. <laughs> but this is a beautiful example of a thriving ant colony right in the edge of a forest here in uh, Montana. That's kind of cool. There are actually two species living here. A small laceus just stuck down into this nest. And over here is a small colony of Manica and they're actually living right here. Many ant colonies will live in parallel to each other and uh, seem to coexist. It's only when disturbed that the colonies actually seem to have issue with each other's presence. One of the best times to look for ants is in the early morning and later into the evening, like right now. What I've noticed about this rock is that it's catching the evening sun, which makes it advantageous to live under for ants. We're gonna go ahead and see what we can find under this rock itself. And I was right. We have a very large laceous colony here. And actually up on this section here, 
there's a small Myrmica colony. Again, two ant species living parallel to each other and in relative peace, uh, at least up until the disturbance that we just caused here. So we just uncovered this rock and there's a large black Formica species here. You can see that they're hauling around very large cocoons. These are the cocoons of queens. In Formica and in Laceus, usually the cocoons that actually contain the elates end up a darker brown color. I really have no idea why this might be, but it's a pretty interesting fact and it can be a useful diagnostic when looking at ant pupae. Now, I think the saying goes, moss always points to where the ants are. Hmm. So we found right here a very large thatching ant nest. These are ants that like to live under uh, large rocks and particularly in dead logs, just like this, right on the edge of a forest. We're gonna go ahead and flip it and check out what the ant colony inside is like. When you're exploring the outdoors, it is so important to make sure that you leave things as respectfully as you can. And that includes uh, when you flip logs or even rocks. What we're going to do here is flip this log, but I'm going to do so in a way that I'm going to try to minimize any kind of casualties within the ant colony and any kind of disturbance that will cause. We're looking at the heart of the thatching ant colony. There are many workers of different sizes, which means that this Formica species is polymorphic. One thing that we haven't seen so far are any queens, and they may just be deeper underground in the heart of the nest. One thing I wanted to leave you with knowing is that after we disturb a nest like this, uh, while it does superficially look damaged, and there is some real damage there, the ants will have it all repaired and resealed uh, within 24 to 48 hours with very little disruption to the colony itself. It's important to understand the ecology of the organisms that you're dealing with and what the effects are uh, that you can impose on them when you're interacting with them in the environment. We had a fantastic time exploring Highlight Canyon. Even though we were only about 20 minutes from home, we got to see lots of cool ant species. Don't forget to get out and explore the natural areas around you. Thanks for watching and subscribe so you can join us on our next adventure.